Hey guys, Miss Peterson here, and welcome to AP Physics 2, Lecture 4-1, all about circuits. Okay, today we're going to be talking about the electromotive force and current and resistivity and power, and really going through kind of an overview of everything we're going to be learning this unit. Uh, this is kind of our foundational lecture that's going to give us the vocabulary and some of the tools that we use to analyze circuit. And then most of the learning of this unit will be done through labs. Okay, but let's go ahead and talk about some of the basics. Starting with current. Okay, now current is defined as the flow of positive charge or the rate of positive charge flow. On your equation sheet, it is defined as the change in charge over time, okay? Now that's the current. It is defined as the positive charge flow, which we do know is the reverse of how electricity actually flows in circuits. We know now that electricity flows actually from negative to positive because it's the negatively charged electrons that move in the wires. But when we first discovered electricity, we didn't know that. And so the convention of the positive charge flow stuck. Okay, we didn't know about electrons yet. So that stuck and the convention stuck. That's why current is always opposite the actual flow of the electrons. Okay, but why does current flow? Well, we learned that in electrostatics. Anytime you have a difference in electrical potential, aka voltage. Okay, and current will flow from high to low potential, just like positive charges. The units are amperes or amps, where one amp is defined as one coulomb per second. Now, this is lots of current. Um, okay, one charge per second is uh, quite a bit. And again, we define a circuit as just any path that allows this current to flow. Okay, we'll often be working in milliamps, which is times 10 to the negative three amps or microamps, which is times 10 to the negative 6 amps. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Now, let's talk about a battery. Okay. Now, one of the confusing things, I think, about batteries is in the language that we normally use around batteries. Okay. We say we charge a battery. But that's not the reality, okay? The reality is that we energize a battery, okay? It's not that the battery contains a bunch of electrons that it sends flowing through the thing. What it does is use chemical properties to set a potential difference, okay? The battery sets that difference in voltage, and that's what causes the force of the charges moving around the circuit, okay? Um, that voltage uh, from the battery is defined as the joules per coulomb. So most batteries, A, AAA, AA, C, D, are all 1.5 volts battery, meaning 1.5 joules of energy per coulomb of charge that passes through the battery. Okay. Um, just to give you an example, this is a diagram of a lithium ion battery. So we can see at the negative terminal of the plate, Okay, we have, or sorry, at the negative terminal, the anode, we have copper, okay, copper with some lithium ions, okay, and it is separated from the aluminum at the cathode, okay, so it's the aluminum at the cathode, the copper at the anode, and the lithium metal is what is actually going on. So the lithium gets oxidized and um, reduced and oxidized by these two substances, and that's what sets that difference in potential. Um, if you want to know a little bit more about how a battery works, I highly recommend checking out the TED Ed uh, battery video, as well as Science Asylums that you don't charge a battery. Um, and I'll link those. So, what about resistance? Okay. In any circuit, there is going to be resistance. It's a measure of how easy or difficult it is for the current to flow, okay? Um, it's a, typically, you can use the analogy of a pipe, okay? If you have less resistance, the current just flows through easily. Where if you have more resistance, that is like a narrow part of the pipe, okay? Something that's going to block that flow of current and make it a little bit more difficult to get through. Um, the units that we use for resistance is ohms, okay, join the resistance, ohm, um, 
And a resistance of one ohm means that a current will flow at a rate of one amp if one volt is applied. Okay, so it's like kind of like the amps per volt if you want to think of it that way. Um, now, everything has some resistivity. Everything has some resistance. Um, and we call that resistivity. Uh, that's a lowercase rho. And if we have an actual resistor, okay, a resistor, we can relate its resistance to its properties. Uh, it's resistivity times the length of it divided by the area, okay? So this is for cylinder resistors, okay, where we have the resistance and then the resistivity, which is an intrinsic property of a material, okay, in units of ohm meters. Um, L will be the length of the resistor in meters, and A will be the area or the surface, the surface area um, of that resistor in meters squared. And okay. now conductors like wires have really, really low resistivity, such low resistance we don't really even um, count it most of the time. Where insulators, okay, like air, have really high resistance. And you can kind of get a sense of the scale of it from like a wire at negative 8 ohms to ohm meters to air, which is times 10 to the 16th ohm meters. So there's a large scale um, in different materials and their resistivity properties. Um, and then how that applies mostly in circuits is any element we put in a circuit that causes resistance, we call a resistor. Okay. Now everything, everything in circuits, we will solve it using Ohm's law, which on your equation sheet is written in terms of current. So the current in a circuit equals the potential difference divided by the resistance, okay? And this equation will work anywhere in a circuit. You can talk about the total battery current and voltage and current in the circuit. You can talk about in an individual resistor, its current and voltage, okay? Yeah. Now power in a circuit, Power is equal to the current times that voltage, which makes sense, okay? Power in a circuit, you, we normally can determine by the brightness of bulbs. Uh, that's how you'll see it pop up most often, okay? Bulbs are given a wattage rating, which is a power rating, okay? Watts. And you might remember that a watt or power is energy over time or joules per second, okay? Now, in our equation, we have, um, oh, and I put watts as energy over time or work as energy over time. I mean, power is the energy over time, okay? So when we have power equals current times voltage, current we know is the rate of charge flow, so the coulombs per second, and then voltage is the energy per charge. So the joules per coulomb. So coulomb and, can coulomb and coulomb cancel out, and we're left with joules per second, which is a watt. A watt. Okay. Power is measured in watts. Watts is a joule per second. Okay. Cool. Okay, cool. Moving right along. In all of our circuit labs, we will be using ammeters and voltmeters. So an ammeter, this A right here is its symbol for it when we do circuit diagrams. Ammeters measure current and they must be connected in series with whatever you're measuring, meaning it has to be along the same path, okay? Typically, these are modeled in an ideal situation of having zero resistance, like a wire. So they don't affect the current and allow circuit to flow. Where voltmeters, okay, the voltmeter right here has to be placed in parallel or above, over, in junction with what it is measuring, okay? It measures potential difference, um, and it must be connected in parallel. Now, these have extremely high resistance to prevent any current flowing through those paths that are connected. Um, this path right here it has really high resistance. Essentially, no current will flow, and we can use that to measure that potential difference, okay? We will also have switches in a circuit, 
in our circuit diagram, those look like those, like that, when it's open, and like this, when it's closed. And in an open circuit, no current flows, okay? Open does not mean it's open for business and it's open to let things go through. Open means there's a break in the circuit and it will not flow, okay? Okay, cool. So, for most of these, we will be using uh, Kirchhoff's rules to help us analyze circuits. So, what they are is that... Uh, any positive currents entering a junction plus the negative currents leaving a junction must equal zero. Okay, so this is the junction rule. And really, these are, this is just conservation of electric charge. Okay, if you have some current I1 going into a junction, okay, and you have two currents coming out, I2 and I3, then we know that I1 must equal I2 plus I3, okay, because it is a junction. The current splits, so the charge splits. Can't have all the charge go in in one direction, so they're going to be equal. Where we also have what's called the loop rule. And so the loop rule is the sum of the potential drops around a closed loop is zero, okay? So that's like delta V from the battery, Okay, plus the change in voltage across the resistor, plus the change in voltage across some other resistor, must equal zero. When I do this, I will typically write it as the voltage drop across the battery equals the voltage drop across each resistor in the loop. Okay, um, but yeah, okay, that's just conservation of energy. Uh, voltage is the energy per charge, so if it's going around some loop back to the battery, Okay, any loop around there, okay, has to add up to zero. You can't have any energy being used that's not being created and, or that's not being set by that battery or any energy being um, used that's not coming from anywhere. Okay. Uh, and for these, if you go through a battery, so if going in the direction of current, so in, let me make this a little smaller, so if you're going in the direction of the current, then batteries will have positive changes in voltage and resistors will have negative changes in voltage. Oops, changes in voltage. Okay, where if you're going in the opposite direction of current, then you would flip those. Batteries would drop the voltage and resistors would add voltage. So how that's used in practice is like this. So if we're assuming all these resistors are the same, okay, we have I1 going in to this junction and then it splits into I2 and I3. So we know that I1 splits into I2 and I3. So I1 must be the greatest, okay? I1 will definitely be the greatest, okay? And then between I2 and I3, we have to look at the resistance. So more current will flow through a path of lower resistance. So we're going to have less current flowing through I2, which has two resistors, than through R4. So I1 would be less than I3, and the highest or the highest um, or the smallest current would be I2. And we could actually figure those out. Uh, mathematically, it would be I1 equals I2 plus I3. And since um, this path has double the resistance, okay, it's actually going to have half the amount of current. V equals IR. And they'll have the same difference in potential because they are connected to the same two junctions. So um, I2 is going to be half as much as I3. Okay, cool. Now let's think about the loops, okay? And I'll do the loops in red. So in this circuit, we have two main loops. We have this loop right here, okay? And then we have this 
loop right here. And actually, we could consider this loop right here as well. Um, though in that one, we'd be going the opposite direction on the current on sum. So if we're thinking about each of these loops, okay, for this bolded one that I have drawn, okay, adding up to zero, we would have the voltage of the battery minus the voltage across R1 minus the voltage across R2 minus the voltage across R3, okay? Now for the, go ahead and pick a different color for this. I'll use purple, okay? I'll go ahead and do the big loop as well because I think that one's going to be helpful for us to see. We would have zero equals the voltage of the battery, positive, minus the voltage drop across R1, minus the voltage drop across R4, okay? So hopefully by seeing those two equations, okay, you can see that R4 must have a bigger voltage drop than R2 and R3, okay? Because, yeah, both of those there and just one of them here. Otherwise, those two loops have the same voltage drop. So uh, we'll go ahead and say the R4 is going to be greater than R2. R2 and R3 are identical, and they're on the same path. They both have the same current flowing through them. And since voltage equals current times resistance, the current is the same, the resistance is the same, that change in voltage will be the same as well. So, uh, and I should do this in terms of the voltage. Delta V across the R4 resistor will be less than delta V across the R2 resistor, which will be equal to the voltage drop across the R3. Okay, and again, those two are equal because they have the same current and the same resistance. Now, for R1, figuring out where R1 goes on this path, well, let's think about it, okay? R1 definitely has the most current flowing through it, okay? R1 has the biggest amount of current and the same resistance as all of the other resistors. So if it has the most amount of current, then it is going to also then have the highest voltage, okay? So V1 will be greater than all of these. Since they're all identical. Okay. Actually, if we're thinking about this, that is not true at all. It does have the most current going through it. Oops, undo. Okay, it does have the most current going through it, but if we look at this path, okay, where VB equals minus R1 and minus R4, okay, well, they're the same resistors. Oh, but they don't have the same current going through them. But they're the same resistance. Okay, nope, so R1 is definitely going to be more um, than R4 because... Um, I was thinking for a second they might be equal. The voltage drops across each of them might be equal. But R4 is going to have less current going through it. So it's going to have less voltage on it. That's how we use the loop rules. Okay, cool. Okay, cool.